ご紹介をありがとうございました。今年のマハラオープンフォーラムで皆様に素晴らしいニュースをお伝えできることを嬉しく思います。このコンフェレンスがマハラを使った実践の共有する機会となり素晴らしいコンフェレンスとなることを願っています。このプレゼンテーションでは、どこにマハラ16点12加えられた新しい機能についてお話ししたいと思います。それは、コンペテンスフレームワークとその評価をマハラに取り入れる方法です。では、これからそれをご紹介します。ePortfolio software oftentimes needs to serve multiple purposes、um, in order to be successful in one institution because oftentimes、um, we are not just creating one portfolio but multiple portfolios. Mahara started out to be developed as a personal learning environment, meaning that the learner Was always in the center of the attention, and that it was up to the learner to decide what they wanted to put into their portfolio and also with whom they wanted to share it. This works really well when we are looking at the context of、uh, personal learning environment portfolios and also lifelong portfolios. However, institutions. Oftentimes, also want to use portfolios for assessment purposes. And oftentimes, we see higher uptake of portfolios when they are related to classroom work,、um, related to projects, and when students also get grades for them. And therefore, we need to look at portfolios using them for both. But in which way? Can we do that without losing the portfolio thinking and just making it yet another assessment in the classroom? Well, the idea really is to use assessments that are working well with portfolio methodologies、um, and portfolio thinking. So, not to make it just yet another assessment, but really integrate it into the portfolio work and still let the portfolio shine. And so, one idea for that is to work with competency frameworks. Because when we are looking at competencies and when competencies are being assessed, we are looking at Creating portfolios in which we have evidence and also reflections on that evidence, and then align it with standards within a competency framework and match these two up together. And so that's what we are. I'm starting to do now in Mahara 16.10 with smart evidence. Smart evidence is a way of aligning portfolios to a competency framework. And here you see、uh, in this example, we are working with a framework. Um, that is set up in Japan for working people. And what that means is that you can align your evidence with a competency standard. In an annotation, for example, you can say how your evidence and any related evidence、um, relate to a competency standard. And you can be assessed on that. But it is not just the alignment that is important in smart evidence, but also the visualization 
of how much you have already gained and how much you have already completed within that particular competency framework. So here you see the evidence map. Um, that is a visualization of the competency framework and all the evidence that goes with it. And what does that mean? Well, on the top you have your Mahara portfolio pages which contain the evidence. And the evidence is always contextualized so that you have, um, like in, in a portfolio right now, that you collect your files, um, your images and your reflections, put them all into a context and showcase them together um, so that um, you have see the full picture of what you want to, what skills or competencies you'd like to showcase. And then you can match them with particular standards. And you can um, showcase them for multiple uh, standards. They do not just have to go with one particular standard, but the evidence can go and can be used in multiple competencies, as you can see here on the map. And so what is possible then is that you align your, your evidence with the competencies and make it possible for an assessor to take a look and then assess you accordingly. How does it work? Well, in Mahara, administrators can set up a competency framework. And here is what a file would currently look like. Um, it is currently set up as text file and then uploaded by a site administrator into the Mahara instance. And a competency framework can be set up for the entire Mahara site, or it can also be restricted to individual institutions. And as you can see here, the entire framework can be set up in any language because you're free to choose what you would like to put into the file. And also you can choose the descriptors in Japanese in this case, for example, as well as um, have all the other language strings in your language. Institution administrators can also immediately use any framework that is available in their institution and add it to a collections. But also as regular learner, you can do so when a framework has been made available for your institution. Because all you need to do is choose the framework that you would like to work with on the collection setup screen. So you can do that in your own portfolio or institution administrators or also individual teachers can do so when they create a template and can therefore associate a competency standard or framework immediately with an entire portfolio. And then a student can place an annotation um, on a page or multiple annotations can be placed on a page and with an annotation they link the evidence to a particular standard and make that connection clear so that an assessor knows why the learner thinks that this particular standard goes with the evidence. So they write a short annotation and then this is available to an assessor. And the assessor can pro view the annotation and then provide feedback as well as make an 
assessment. And currently the assessment can be um, threefold, namely that the evidence meets the standard, partially meets the standard, or doesn't meet the standard, um, indicating to the student um, how much more work is needed in order to fulfill the standard by explaining that in the feedback. And then through the feedback functionality on the annotation, can the assessor and the learner communicate with each other and improve um, the evidence, learn more, and then get it to where the student needs to be. But of course, anybody else who has access to the collection can also leave feedback. An assessment, though, is restricted to staff members or to institution administrators within the institution. Or, alternatively, a portfolio owner could also self-assess the portfolio if the standard allows for that. So what I have shown you now is the initial implementation of smart evidence. There is still a long way to go to implement lots of other features that we already know um, the community is interested in, but we wanted to make this initial implementation already available as experimental implementation in Mahara 16.10 so that everybody can try it out and work with it and see how it works for them, whether it is useful and what other functionality might be needed. Therefore, we are looking forward to your feedback and learning more how you are using smart evidence and also what other features you would be interested in so that we can prioritize these and um, work more on the smart evidence functionality. Because we, we are aware that um, the usage will be different from universities to associations and um, also schools and therefore would like to know what you want to use smart evidence for and also see how you might want to contribute to it in whichever way you can. So we are looking forward to receiving your feedback. Besides smart evidence, there's also a number of other new features coming in the October release of Mahara this year. So I'm going to name just a few of them that you can look forward to. One of them is the Connection Manager. The Connection Manager is an extension to our web services infrastructure that we have on Mahara and allows you to set up the connection with other software more easily. So without having to go into the code base directly, can you now set up collections on the administrator interface? This is also coupled with the integration of simple SAML PHP directly within Mahara. Now you do not need to set up um, that infrastructure for single sign-on via SAML on the server, but can do so directly by installing Mahara. Another interesting feature um, that we could implement in Mahara thanks to PHBurn who uses Switch Portfolio is the duplication of groups. That will make it possible for any group to be copied, um, including its content of pages and collections, and be reused. This feature is handy when you need to set up two three or more groups for individual student projects and only need to change small amounts 
of information for each group. Um, but otherwise, want to keep the instructions the same, provide the same um, portfolio templates within the group, and also have the same layout of those groups. So making the setup for lecturers faster so that they do not have to do that manually for a multitude of groups all the time. Another feature that we could implement thanks to Australian National University is um, the possibility of now being able to administer any group on Mahara via CSV file. In the past, it was only possible to, um, to make changes to a group or to multiple groups um, via C file when the groups were set up with a CSV file, so when they were set up in bulk. So with a CSV bulk upload, you, could, you can change the group name, you can change group settings, and you can also change the group membership very easily without having to individually select users to add or remove to your group. And therefore, the CSV bulk options are very powerful. However, you could only use them if you had set up a group by CSV file already, but not when you had set up the group manually. And this new feature now allows us to administer any group by CSV, making it very easy for lecturers to continue creating their groups as they used to, but now have the added bonus of administrators to also use bulk options, um, for example, at the end of a term in order to archive groups or to remove students from it without um, too much effort. If you are interested in the full list of all the new features that we have available in Mahara, you can follow this link here and see a list of all the features. Um, there are also, like usual, many bug fixes within Mahara 16.10 that is coming out in October this year. And if you want to give a go, for these new features, you can go to our, um, you can test the release candidate for Mahara um, either by downloading your own version of Mahara onto a test server or by registering on master.dev.mahara.org. That site does contain the Japanese framework that I've shown you earlier that Makoto Miyazaka set up for the conference so that you can try it out. And last but not least, I would like to thank Masa for his translation support for this presentation and Makoto for setting up the Smart Evidence Framework. If you have any questions and would like to get in touch with me, you can reach me via email or social media, send me a message and um, we can continue talking to each other about the new features um, or also discuss them in the Mahara community.